I'm going to be looking into a few questions and trying to answer them without using the elite's brainwashing science that school fills the kids' heads with, which creates cognitive dissonance, but more using observational skills that anyone can see with their eyes, a bit of maths in the form of distance, and plain old using that brain. As I stated previously, the flat earth is based on a Dunning-Kruger effect, where people have rejected the official narrative and will accept anything in opposition to the official narrative without truly doing research by watching any convincing YouTube video that fits their preconceived views and in some cases by just making stuff up without bringing any proof of claim or evidence or a theory in which anyone can experiment on. The Dunning-Kruger effect is part of the illusionary truth effect regime. It's a tendency of an individual to believe something, whether it's true or valid, if it has been repeated multiple times or if it's just easier to process regardless of whether it's true or then these people will move on to creating a confirmation bias around themselves from which they can then spread their information and build up a bigger group of people. This then creates social proof tendency, which is the tendency of people to think and act as others around them do, primarily because of their socially based validation and people will then accept them in their what we call an echo chamber is where everyone sits in a room and they all believe in the same practice and anyone who tries to uh, question anything that they believe in then that person is attacked or ignored any of their information because they're not part of that echo chamber and they haven't created a confirmation bias or the illusionary truth effect which is part of a Dunning-Kruger effect in the flat earth's way. Then after the echo chambers are created, conservation tendency is what is known as the belief bias. It's the resistance to revise one's beliefs and perspectives when presented with new evidence. Even though people will come along and show them a different way or evidence or something which they can scrutinize and disprove themselves they tend to not and just ignore it that's when the selective exposure theory comes in which is often used in the media and communication but individuals do it themselves where they favor a certain part of information and then push that out and that's when the continued influence bias happens where previously learned information and new evidence comes along is just ignored they will then try and promote that evidence which is form of obscurantism where they're just promoting what they believe is to be true whether it's the truth or not and they try to stop people from researching and disproving what they believe to be true and then this goes round in a circle where people say they did my own research when really they watched someone else's shitty youtube video and then just created their own confirmation bias around this an echo chamber and then selective pushing out information which bolsters this echo chamber and confirmation bias that they've created. I would like to ask 10 questions for any globe or flat earther to answer either in the comments or by making a video highlighting each individual question only. I will also give a few example experiments you can do around the house and ones you can do around the globe but I would always welcome any experiment or observation that I could do an experiment on for myself. If you have watched part one of this video you will see that I briefly brushed up on a few things but I didn't really explore any of the questions in great detail which I hope to do so in this video so please enjoy hit the thumbs up subscribe and if you haven't make sure you click the bell also check out the blog with 487 posts that i've been doing since 2010 and the 60 page flat earth research paper which answers most of these questions why at the north pole do we only see stars rotating around polaris anticlockwise at the equator, the stars move from east to west and the south pole, we see stars rotating around Alpha Centauri clockwise. Amateurs can prove this with simple long exposure cameras set over a specific length of time and sped up. Flight routes from the UK to the Caribbean takes 12 hours flying over the Atlantic, as you can see with the red line. Argentina to Australia takes 12 hours flying over the Pacific. On any flat earth, 
design this route is four times as long and there would need to be some secret magic portal without the pilots knowing and even if you went in the straight line it still doesn't work or somehow manage you to get there quicker than what it would. If the sun is a spotlight, you would see a small amount of the light anywhere on the earth at any time, even if it didn't directly shine on you. There would be no night or day cycles. The sun wouldn't go down below the horizon as it does every day. How would this work on a flat earth? Then there is the slight problem with lunar eclipses. Many flat earthers say the moon is an illusion or a spotlight is responsible for it fixed to the firmament. On our round earth, a lunar eclipse happens when the earth lines up between the sun and the moon. If that was the case on a flat earth, this is how the lunar eclipse would look like, even if that would require some special alignment. The only way this is possible is if somehow the, the sun and the moon came out of the fixed firmament to create this illusion of the eclipse. <laughs> Why do we all see one side of the moon when the direction of its orientation correlates with our latitude? Some will say it's the firmament or the illusion. But what about the question of satellite eclipses around the time of the equinox? On a flat earth, we would all see the moon, but depending on where you are on the earth, the moon would have a different face and a different shape as it passes overhead. How does this work on a flat earth model? Flat Earth is like to say, why do planes not constantly adjust up or down with the Earth's curvature and with the mechanical gyroscope to scale and route without taking the centre of gravity into the account? Yes, they do constantly adjust, but on a flat Earth, planes would constantly be having to adjust left and right to stay on routes such as Argentina to Australia, which flies over a number of Pacific Islands and New Zealand, somehow only taking 12 hours. How would this be possible? What about pilots, large boats or individuals that circumnavigate the earth only going in one direction? First officially done in 1520 by Portuguese sailor and then officially by Sir Francis Drake in 1577. In 2017, a French woman broke the record for sailing over the Atlantic doing 2,880 miles. The same year, an Australian woman became the first woman to circumnavigate Antarctica, sailing east and tracking 6,530 miles. On any flat earth design, this would take four times as long. My house, which is 215 foot above sea level, is around 70 miles from the London Shard, which is 1,017 feet high, and 90 miles from Paris's Eiffel Tower, which is 980 feet high. Yet, I can see airplanes over 100 miles away in the sky, or the moon a quarter of a million miles away. I've also seen the Isle of Wight from Brighton, which is the same latitude, but 60 miles away. With the calculation of Earth's curvature to sight, I cannot see these monuments. But why can I not see them on a flat Earth? You would think I would be able to. The purpose of the Cavendish experiment was to calculate the gravitational constant g. Measuring the force of attraction allows us to calculate g. Once we knew what g was, we were able to calculate the mass of the Earth. Density is simply mass per unit volume. How much matter sits in a particular space? Why, if you use the same gravitational equation for a flat Earth model, does it not meet the calculations unlike everything else that is existent in the universe? If you neglect resistance, objects falling near Earth's surface will go with the same approximate acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. So the acceleration is the same for objects and consequently their velocity is also increasing at a constant rate. Because the downward force on an object is equal to its mass multiplied by g, heavier objects have greater downward force. How would this work on the, the edge or the center of a flat Earth? Bob raised nearly 200,000 for the Flat Earth community. Costs start from 5 to 25,000 to venture around Antarctica, climb Mount Vincent, or film the edge of the Earth over the ice wall with a 10,000 drone, as scientific uses of drones is permitted in Antarctica. 
recreational use with a permit and commercial use is banned. It's 5,000 to 25,000 to launch a good high altitude such as the BU-61 which reached heights of 32 miles in 2002. The highest manned hot air balloon got 13 miles up. The SR-71 pilots reached a height of 17 miles. In order to see Earth's curvature, you need to go at least 10 to 12 miles up. A really dodgy rocket from Kazakhstan to the International Space Station would cost around 100 grand and would get you 200 miles up. Circumnavigating the Earth would cost about five to twenty thousand pounds depending on the equipment. So why did Bob or none of the flat earthers do any of these experiments that are there? So there are many experiments and ways theoretically, mathematically, real observation, photos, videos and actually performing proven experiments from people who believe in the globe which has a way been open and free to scrutiny. Now I'm holding an invitation to an experiment that you could suggest that I could do. Maybe a sneaky photo or video of the flat earth. Where are the whistleblowers? Um, where's the evidence? I'm open to some maths, science, or even a theory or two, such as how do things work on the flat earth? How do companies like NASA, who get millions in funding every year, to pay scientists to hide the flat earth life from humanity, get away with it, but then just allow flat earth conferences, internet channels, prime time and classroom discussions and a huge culture to exist in defiance of such a huge secret that bears no significant increase in improvement of wealth or power by the so-called elites running over humanity. So what is the point to it? We do have one example that the Flat Earth community have given us to maybe test or have a look into and that is the Flat Earth Clock app that you can get on most phones. If you see at June the 21st, the sun is the nearest to the centre point and Perth, Australia or most of Australia is in complete darkness and as we go further away to December the 21st, the sun is further away and you would think that Perth would be in even more darkness but it's in even more sunlight which just goes to show show the ridiculousness of the flat earth model which the calculations have been based on a heliocentric model which just goes to show them basically just trolling themselves right now without even noticing. Well in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer and I'll uh, drop the two up here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Uh, my... <laughs> Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings.